Shireen's killing is the story, the same story she was telling. The difference is that this time, the world knew the victim. We are not being killed because of what we do, but because of who we are. We are not being killed by mistake, but as part of a grand design aiming to make sure we all understand no one is safe so that we all live with fear in our hearts and surrender. That was Palestinian-American diplomat Riyad Mansour speaking at the United Nations two weeks ago. June the 11th marks one month since the murder of Al Jazeera journalist Shireen Abu Akleh by Israeli forces. At the time, there was international outrage and condemnation, but who will be held accountable for her death? Today on the stream, we continue to honour the life of our colleague as we bring you the latest efforts to secure justice for Shireen. Let's meet your panel. Hello, Lena, Yasmin and Nida. So good to have you on the stream today. Lena, please introduce yourself to our viewers around the world. Hi, everyone. I'm Lena Abakle. I'm Shireen's niece. Good to have you. Hello, Yasmin. Welcome to the stream. Tell our audience who you are and what you do. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Yasmin Sirhan, and I'm a London-based staff writer for The Atlantic. Thanks for being with us. And a familiar face if you watch Al Jazeera News all of the time. Nida, welcome back to the stream. Please remind our audience who you are and what you do. My name is Nida Ibrahim and I'm Al Jazeera's correspondent to the Occupied West Bank. All right. So, audience, you have seen the lineup. They have expertise in this tragic area of the justice for Shireen Abu Akleh. What would you like to ask them? You can ask them anything. Comment section is right here. Be part of today's show. Lena, this last month, wow, it went so fast. What has it been like for you and your family? Uh, first and foremost, thank you for having me on the show. Uh, it's still so difficult to comprehend that it's been a month. Um, we still haven't processed that this is the reality that we know I will no longer see Shirin on TV reporting, that I will no longer be spending uh, um, my weekends with Shirin. Um, it's been very tough to say the least. It's been a, a difficult tragedy that was a loss not just to our family, but to the entire nation and to the entire world. Um, we've received overwhelming amount of support and love from everyone. Uh, not just Palestinians, but people from all over the world. And that just goes on to show that Shirin was loved by everyone. Shirin was a uh, people's person. She entered everyone's home through the through TV screen. And um, the same way that she carried the stories mm -hmm. of all the people, uh, how she brought to life all the stories of the Palestinians, uh, we saw on the day of her funeral how the Palestinians carried her on their on their shoulders. And that has been comforting to our family, the support, but we will continue to carry her legacy and to continue to keep her memory alive. Lena, I, I just had a look through your Twitter feed to see how the last month had gone for you. And there's this beautiful picture here. Have a look here on my laptop, because I don't want you to miss this, that you posted. I hadn't had the heart or the courage to post a picture from the funeral. But here's one of my favorite pictures from that day. And I'm just gonna scroll down so everybody can see it. Tell us why this picture is so special to you. Uh, where do I begin? I mean, the, the picture, the flags, the people, and just the uh, paintings on the walls of the, of the Catholic Church just symbolizes to me was very it was very special it's very difficult to express it and to put it into words but it just shows how everyone was there for shiri and everyone did their best to be at the church despite the restrictions despite the difficulties they faced and that picture in a way speaks to me 
um, it's very emotional. It has some spiritual sense to it. Mm -hmm. But other than that, it was the Palestinian flags and just her her the, her coffin being carried. Uh, that to me was very symbolic. It just shows how the people were carrying her from the moment she left the hospital to the moment she was at the at the church. And uh, having the Palestinian flags raised high in the church also was very emotional. And uh, it was a powerful image, to say the least. Mm -hmm. I, I want to bring in Nida, the head of Al Jazeera's America's Bureau, because the moment that we heard about the tragic murder of Shireen, Al Jazeera, was, there needs to be accountability. This is one of our own. The expectations were very high. Uh, this is uh, the head of Al Jazeera's America's Bureau uh, speaking on May the 26th, I believe. Take a look. Al Jazeera's position is crystal clear. Shirin Abu Akhla's life matters. And so does a transparent and independent investigation of her killing and of the serious violation of her funeral by the Israeli security forces. There are other crystal clear issues for Al Jazeera Network. One, Shirin Abu Akhla was killed by an Israeli bullet and in cold blood while she was doing her job. Two, the network has the evidence and the witnesses to support that position. So, Nida, at some point we have to start looking at well, which investigations have been carried out. What are people looking into? What do we need to know? From a news perspective, what's new in the past month? Before I answer your question, Femi, I want to say that one of Shireen's legacies is this mm. panel over here, all women, uh -huh. all part yeah. of her legacy. She was someone mm. we saw growing up reporting on the news. And there's a saying that goes, you can't be what you can't see. And we saw Shireen on camera, highly respected, on the front lines, covering the stories, in danger, in uh, uh, difficult positions. So that empowered us all. And every time I have doubts in myself, I remember her, especially more so after she was killed. She has been a driving force that's changing so many things, so many lives in Palestine. And we see the outpour of love by so many people. Um, just a few days ago, we were in Janine covering a story and a 10-year-old girl came to me and Rania Zabana, our producer, and she was like, are you sisters of Shireen? And I posted that on my Instagram and people were saying, you know, we are all sisters of Shirin. We all feel like she was a member of our family. And this is why people want accountability. This is why the Palestinian Authority has uh, asked the ICC to hold uh, an investigation into this specific case to pursue the killers. Now, we know that the Palestinian foreign minister was today meeting with the ICC's prosecutor, Karim Khan, urging to uh, prosecute killers when it comes to the murder of Sharina Abu Aqleh. Now, we don't know yet if the ICC is going to be looking into this case specifically. We know that an investigation has been opened last year after the court's prosecutor, uh, Fami bin Souda at the time, Fatih bin Souda, has said that there is uh, potential uh, uh, crimes that have been committed into the uh, war crimes that have been potentially committed in the Palestinian territory. But ever since then, we haven't seen them uh, push or advance cases, which is why we've seen the Palestinian foreign minister. Now, what people want is because she's also an American citizen, they want the U.S. to intervene mm -hmm. and they want uh, an investigation into the case. Whether they believe that the U.S. is going to care more about one citizen than it cares about its relationship with Israel. People have so many doubts about that. Yasmin, you've got to come in here. Let me just share something with you. These are two senators on my laptop. They sent a letter. All over the world, journalists pursue truth and accountability at great personal risk. Press freedom is a core American value, and we cannot accept impunity when journalists are killed in the line of duty. It goes on, but it's really interesting that we have a Democratic senator and a Republican senator. Those are two senators coming together saying this is not enough. We need accountability. What else are you seeing? How is the U.S. reacting? There has been criticism. Yeah, certainly. Um, you know, I think that letter uh, written by uh, Senators John Ossoff and Mitt Romney um, is indicative of just how much of a chord this has struck with American lawmakers. Um, in addition to their letter, 
There was also another letter signed by more than 50 lawmakers calling for the U.S. Um, to really push for an ind independent and transparent investigation into Shireen Abu Akhla's death. Um, so clearly, I think U.S. lawmakers, even now, that letter only came out this week, despite the fact that we're approaching the month anniversary of her killing, they're not letting up. This is something that's still um, really, you know, kind of top of mind. And I think that's really important because so far we've seen that the Biden administration um, has declined to open its own probe into this investigation. It said that it really wants the Israelis and the Palestinians mm. to do that. Yeah. Um, but as I argued in my piece, I, I think that the U.S. has an opportunity and frankly a responsibility here. As you noted, Shireen was an American citizen. And, you know, the U.S., the State Department has said itself that it has no higher priority than to that of its citizens abroad, to, the, to their safety and their security. So there is an opportunity here. And while it may be certainly long overdue, I think many people have argued that. I would argue that it's also not too late. Mm -hmm. And that letter was sent to Secretary Blinken, Secretary of State for the United States. I want to bring in here Omar Badal, who is a political analyst. He's also um, really um, passionate about Palestinian rights. And this is what he told us a few hours earlier. Lena, have a listen, and I'd love to get your reaction. Here's Omar, first of all. Lack of accountability from the United States for Israel's atrocities is nothing new. For literally decades, Israel has been committing unspeakable war crimes against Palestinians. And the U.S. has not just been silent, they've actually been funding the Israeli military with billions in weaponry. And now we're just seeing how far this lack of accountability goes, that even when the Israeli military kills an internationally recognized journalist and a U.S. citizen, the Biden administration is merely pretending to care about human rights and uttering platitudes of concern while refusing to actually do anything. Our political culture in the U.S. of putting politics above human beings is what needs to change. Uh, yes, I definitely agree with uh, what Omar said. I mean, uh, Israel for decades has enjoyed uh, uh, impunity. And if it wasn't for that, Shirin's death could have been avoid avoided. So does so is all other um, Palestinians who have been killed. And the U.S. as a super as a superpower does have the the authority. It does have the influence and the power to actually uh, influence. It has the ability to make a change mm -hmm. if it wants to. I mean, it funds, uh, as Omar said, billions of dollars into it into Israel's military, and it's the same military that killed Shirin. So there needs to be accountability. The, uh, the U.S. government needs to carry out an investigation where it actually holds Israel accountable for Shirin's assassination. And um, it's also the, the same will the same, this will continue happening if there's no accountability. And we're hoping that uh, we move past uh, statements of condemnation, statements of uh, regret, and actually see concrete action being taken place. At the end of the day, the U.S. has a responsibility because Shirin was an American citizen and she was a human being. She was a journalist. And um, yeah. what is, we're not asking for more. All right, so Lena, it's literally so her Lena, right. Lena, I want to remind our audience what U.S. Secretary of State Blinken said recently when journalists pressed him for what is the U.S. going to do about this naturalized American citizen? This is what he told those journalists. And then, ladies, I want you to respond to some of the YouTube questions and comments that are coming through very briefly before we move on. Let's take a look at Blinken. Why is there no accountability for Israel or Saudi Arabia for murdering journalists? It is one of the most dangerous places in the world to be a journalist in Palestine. I deplore the loss of, uh, of Shireen. Um, she was a remarkable uh, journalist, an American citizen, uh, as you all know. And there, too, we are determined to follow the facts and get to the truth of what happened. Um, no, they have not yet been. No, they've, I'm sorry, with respect, they have not yet been established. We're looking for, no, they have not. That we were looking for an independent, credible investigation. When that investigation happens, we will follow the facts wherever they lead. It's, it's uh, as straightforward as that. That has not yet happened, but it's something that we very much want to see happen. So, guess I have questions from our audience who are watching right now. Nida, will you handle this one? Let's be honest, Israel will never be held accountable. 
accountable because the world allows them to get away with the murders that they have been committing for decades. This is a hard one to put to a journalist. This is why but go ahead. Past, yeah. yeah, this is why Palestinians say that she is not the first victim. And unfortunately, mm. she's not going to be the last. There is a lot of frustration. There's a lot of anger. And people feel that their lives do not matter uh, just because they're Palestinians. Even when we see in the case of Shireen, well-known, well-respected, working in a prestigious channel, have an American uh, or has, has an American citizenship, and still, she's still judged. Her life is judged based on her identity. She's a Palestinian. So we don't expect to see accountability, but... This doesn't mean that Palestinians won't keep asking for it, won't keep pushing for it. Accepting it as a status quo is a problem. Accepting that the Israeli army can just shoot and kill Palestinians without any accountability, that, that shouldn't be able to continue. And this is part of Shirin's message. She was covering the stories of Palestinians, one story at a time. She was very focused on the human element. She was reporting the stories behind the numbers and the news because she wanted the people to know that these are not just numbers. These are human beings with lives. Each and every one meant so much to their families and to their communities. And she wanted the world to pay attention to put pressure on Israel. We're seeing what's happening now between Russia and Ukraine. We're seeing how uh, the world is looking at the Ukrainians as people under occupation, but we don't see them looking at Palestinians with the same eye. This is part of the message of Shireen. This is why she's been reporting the news for more than two decades. And we'll continue pushing for that message. We'll continue carrying the mantle for Shireen and for others who are still living under more than 55-year-old occupation. Mm. Yasmin, I'm going to put this thought to you from Alex. Alex is watching right now. Uh, briefly, if you, if you could, why has Anthony Blinken made an about-face and he's now calling for an independent investigation of Shireen's murder? Yeah. Thoughts, Yasmin, briefly. Yeah, I mean, I think when it comes to Anthony Blinken and the U.S.'s response, um, you know, they've said time and again that they believe that the Israelis have the wherewithal to conduct their own investigation, that they believe that the Israelis and Palestinians should work together. But I think what we've seen so far is that that kind of investigation isn't forthcoming and also just at this rate not possible. Um, for, for the part of the Israelis, they've ruled out a criminal probe. Um, but frankly, you know, a, a lot of critics have made the point that Israel, frankly, doesn't have the track record to, to investigate itself in this matter or the incentive to do so. Um, likewise with the Palestinians, I mean, to, to, to the Israelis' point, however, they have noted that they can't conduct a criminal inquiry unless they get the bullet um, that, was, that was taken from Sh Shireen that, or that killed Shireen, um, and the Palestinian Authority refuses to hand that over because they don't trust the Israelis to conduct an investigation. So the U.S. is, in effect, calling for a solution that simply doesn't exist, mm -hmm. and thus there's a vacuum. And I think what what they haven't come around to is this notion that actually this vacuum can really only be filled by the U.S. government, because the only other government that has an obligation to Shireen is the American government. Sure. Earlier, we spoke to Draw Sadat from an organization called Bid Salem, and it's a reality check for what the past month has been like in Palestine. And this is what Draw told us earlier. Since the killing of Shireen Abu Akleh, nine Palestinians were killed by Israeli military and police. The institutionalized and systematic violence against Palestinians, along with impunity to its perpetrators, is a cornerstone in Israel's apartheid regime. In order to end the violence, we must dismantle Israel's apartheid. Nida, has the feeling in Palestine changed in the past month? Are people thinking about Shireen's death as, as some kind of milestone, that something has to change, even though over the many years that they're almost resigned to, well, how can there be accountability? How can there be justice? You know, for someone to be reporting on the news, to become the news, it makes an impact on people, specifically that they loved her, that they felt like she was close to them. We're seeing her being honored. You know, we go travel across the occupied West Bank. We see uh, pictures of her 
uh, even when people meet us in the street, they tell us how much they loved her. They remember her. They want to be an accountability. They've seen a funeral that united so many Palestinians, thousands and thousands of them in Jerusalem, carrying the Palestinian flags. All of these symbols have been translated into the ground. The Palestinians are also raising their flags. They believe that they uh, lost someone who was uniting them, who was so important. And let me also add that people even and didn't know how much she meant to them. Like I had friends who were like, we know her, but we didn't expect to cry that much. She was mm. part of our childhood. Oh so all of that momentum is making people want to keep pursuing justice. They want to keep talking about Shireen and whether we're going to get to a place where we get accountability now, that's a big question. But what they want the world to know is that they're going to keep pushing for accountability, not just for the soldier who killed her, but for the one who gave him the orders. This is part of what the ICC can prosecute against. But what Palestinians want is accountability for the whole system that allows Palestinians to still be living under a military occupation. I want to bring in Maha Nasser, who just really reinforces what you need a um, and Yasmin and Lena have been telling us about Shireen, and that is the incredible impact that she made on the world. Such a big impact that, and I let Mahe pick up from this point. Here's what he told us earlier. The United Nations Department of Global Communications welcomed a proposal from the permanent observer of the state of Palestine to the United Nations to rename a training program it manages to the Shireen Abu Akleh training program for Palestinian broadcasters and journalists. The renaming is a symbolic way of honoring Shireen's legacy and a testament to her bravery and courage. The Secretary General was appalled by her killing and has called for an independent investigation and for those who are responsible to be held accountable. You know, people keep coming up to you. People are inviting you to different places around the world to really honour your aunt, Shireen. But I just want to leave a little bit of time in our show to talk about Aunt Shireen, your auntie, and how you're thinking yeah. about her today. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, as, as Nida said, I, I never ever thought that she would be the breaking news. I never thought I would be, wake up to the day where I see uh, Shireen in the headlines, Shireen breaking news, she's been, uh, she's been killed. As an aunt, on the other hand, she was, she was such a, she was the cool aunt. She was compassionate. Mm -hmm. She was fun to be around. Her sense of humor was uh, definitely my favorite. And she was also a school within herself. I mean, I learned a lot from her. Lena. Just uh, a drive. Lena, like, yes, so look, people a, always say that yeah. uh, someone's got a great sense of humour. But tell us about Art Shireen's sense of humour. What, what still cracks you up to this day? Um, it's just the, 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 the funny stories she would tell us. Uh -huh. um, just our moments. Nothing specific, but okay. just spending an entire uh, day watching Netflix, watching shows. Uh -huh. um, it's just the little things. It's hard to pinpoint them, but she had a fun personality. She was always happy. She was, she always she loved life. Mm -hmm. She always enjoyed the little things, uh, the simplicity of life. Uh, these are the things that I will definitely miss. Thank you so much for telling us about your aunt and remembering that it's not just a political story. It's not about just investigations. It's not even just about her legacy, but about your auntie, Shireen Abu Akleh. Thank you so much, Lena, for sharing your expertise, your family connection with us, and Yasmin and Nida, as we mark the one month anniversary since Shireen Abu Akleh, Al Jazeera's veteran journalist, was murdered. Thanks so much for being part of this show. I'll see you next time. Take care.